First, I would like to express my sincere gratitude and thanks to the organizer of this conference and to the people attending this conference. I actually failed to attend this conference in person, but I think I could uh, utilize the advantage of this technology to reach to you through my recorded version of what I expected to present there. The topic of my discussion is caretaker government. First, I will describe the historical background, very brief historical background of the caretaker system and what is meant by caretaker system and why caretaker system was preferred to uh, party-led election system and what was the impact of caretaker system, then how it was repealed by verdict of the Supreme Court of Bangladesh and how the verdict was utilized or sort of utilized or exploited by the ruling party, the present army government, in introducing the 15th Amendment to repeal the caretaker system permanently. And then I will speak a few words why it should be introduced in our constitution. First, the historical background. Caretaker government was actually a response to the demand of the political parties led by Awamili, Jamaat Islam and some other political parties. The demand was for a free and fair election. It was in 1995-1996. The political parties and people at large, they lost their confidence and their trust in ruling party in conducting a free and fair election. That's why they demanded that the ruling party or the incumbent should resign prior to election and the election should be conducted by a government comprising non-partisan and impartial people who would not have any political ambition. And in response to the mass movement led by all the parties, almost all the parties except BNP, the BNP government in 1996 introduced the caretaker system. They made an amendment in the constitution and that was called 13th Amendment and after that 1996 introduction of the caretaker system in parliament, the next four election was conducted by caretaker government and it was appreciated by foreign observers, by national observers, by the civil society in Bangladesh and it was definitely less debatable even by the political parties. Now first uh, let me explain what is meant by caretaker system. I already explained that the caretaker system means that during the election no partisan government will be there. The election will be conducted by a government in which no political person will take any part. The caretaker government was meant to be comprised one chief advisor and ten advisors. The chief advisor used to play the role of prime minister under a normal system and the advisor were sort of ministers and they were chosen through a very defined system. For example, the chief advisor had to be a person chosen from the last retired chief justices. So the rule was the last retired chief justice would be the head of the caretaker government and in case of his failure or unwillingness the person who retired just before him as a chief justice will be the caretaker system. Then after exhausting all the options among the chief justices, the last retired judge of the appellate division of the Supreme Court would have been the chief of caretaker government. So it was a very clearly defined system. And for induction of the advisor, the system was that the political parties, uh, the system was that chief advisor will be consulted by the president and in consultation with the chief advisor, the president will nominate the advisors. That was written in the constitution, but in practice, the advisor was chosen on the basis of consensus among the political parties. It was a sort of constitutional convention at that time that the political party actually nominated the names of the ultimate no objection had to be given by the political parties. Since the chief advisor and the advisors, they had to be chosen from the people who had no political connection, who would never compete in parliamentary election and who would never participate in direct politics. So it was reasonably expected that the caretaker government will conduct the election in an impartial way since 
it did not have any political involvement it did not have any political ambition it did not have any political future so it was reasonable to assume that the caretaker government will conduct the election in a free and fair way and it will not give any undue advantage to any political party and actually the expectation was not incorrect let me explain the impact of caretaker government i would explain the impact by giving some comparative analysis you know before the caretaker government four general election were conducted in bangladesh under party led government political government for example 1973 election 1979 election 1986 election 1988 election all those election failed to produced a parliament which succeeded to complete five years term in short all the parliament produced by the election conducted under political government failed to complete its term all those parliament ended either with martial law or people's upsurge for the first time in the history of bangladesh the parliament which was a production or which was a product of caretaker government 1999 parliament it succeeded to complete its tenure and all the parliament which were elected through elections conducted by caretaker government succeeded to complete its tenure five years tenure so if you compare all the parliament which were product of political party led election failed to complete its term all the parliament which were product of caretaker government led election succeeded to complete its term it clearly shows that the elections conducted under caretaker of government were much less debatable much less controversial and much more acceptable the second example if you take example of the political party elections conducted under political government all those election in all those election the incumbent won the election the opposition lost the election but if you compare in all the election conducted by caretaker government all the incumbent got defeated and all the political opposition party opposition party won the election so in a country like bangladesh where the incumbent becomes very unpopular in particular in its last year of terms it is reasonable to assume that the incumbent will lose the election this is the trend in bangladesh but how come no incumbent not bangabandhu government not jia government not ashad government none of those government lost the election because it was conducted by the government run by themselves but in case of caretaker government the completely reverse picture all the incumbent be it how many were being the lost the election the opposition party won the election this is second proof that the election conducted under caretaker government are much more credible the third point is if you look at the policy and legal reforms if you look at the law and order situation during the caretaker governments it was much better than the government run by political parties so the third impact or achievement of caretaker government is it has set some good benchmark governance benchmark governance criteria and it has some lasting impact in terms of policy and legal reforms for example the human rights commission for example the reformed uh, anti corruption commission for example the information commission all those things were i mean in a way contribution of the last caretaker government if you look at the national voter id card this is a direct contribution of the last caretaker government if you look at the law and order situation i should repeat it again that caretaker got during the caretaker government generally the law and order situation is much better caretaker government was accepted by the people of bangladesh by the civil society of bangladesh even by the political parties of bangladesh i give you one example even the present awali it accepted caretaker government when it formed a constitution reform committee during the deliberation of that committee in 2010 prime minister shekhatina 
as the Amali chief, he led the Amali delegation and met that committee. Even in that committee, she unequivocally supported the caretaker system. She only said that if the caretaker government failed to conduct the election within 90 days, then the, there should be another alternative. But Sheikh Hasina led Amali, even in 2010, if I am not mistaken, it might be even 2009, but during this, the term of this government, strongly supported caretaker government before the committee created by her own parliament, I mean the present parliament. And if you look at the civil society, I mean I uh, myself participated in the meetings conducted by the uh, parliamentary committee and I closely followed all the paper cuttings and news items at that time. In my view, 95% of the people who participated in those meetings, almost 100% of the professional groups and political parties, except the Jatiya Party, except the Jatiya Party, everyone supported the Jatiya government. Now the question is, how come such an accepted political solution, such a popular political uh, solution, such a, I mean, beneficial system, how come it got deleted by the High Court, by the Supreme Court? This is a, uh, this is something puzzling for us because we know that one of the major function of Supreme Court is unification of the nation, nation building, building of the constitutional order, and at the same time to refrain itself from political questions. But unfortunately, the Supreme Court maybe in 2010 or 11, just a couple of years ago, in a very controversial judgment and by a very slim majority, the appellate division of the Supreme Court, I mean the first the High Court division, categorically endorsed character department. The Supreme Court, the appellate division of the Supreme Court, by a slim majority, it was 3-2, it deleted or it rebuilt the category system. The surprising thing is, the appellate division consulted 10 amicus juries. Amicus theories means friend of the court. Among those ten, nine strongly gave their support for continuation of the caretaker system. So how come you consult ten percent and among those ten percent, nine percent support caretaker government? And how come the court built the system? So why did you in the first place call those amicus theories? And why did you give the chance to talk, give, give them the chance to talk, to present their argument? This is, I mean, this is something which we fail to understand. The biggest mystery, even in the short order given by the appellate division, they had a clear direction that the next two general elections could be held under caretaker government for the welfare of nation, for the welfare of people. Very categorically six. And there was the indication that caretaker government should be non-partisan government. But nearly one and a half years after pronouncing the short order, the retired chief justice gave a full judgment in which he contradicted his short order given when he was chief justice. But in the full order, when the full order is given, he is already a retired chief justice, retired at least one and a half year ago. And while writing the full judgment, he deviated from the very short order he had given. I don't know whether this is legal, whether this is acceptable, whether there is any example of similar incident in the history of legal literature. I mean, this is unthinkable. During these two incidents, passing of the short order and passing of the full judgment, the Albany government, by utilizing its three-court majority, passed the 15th amendment and one of the changes brought about by the amendment was deletion of caretaker government. And after the deletion of caretaker government, if you look at the present day Bangladesh, all the chaos, all the confrontation, all the loss of life and destruction of properties and the absolute uncertainty which is uh, now existing in the society, in my view, one major reason of this is deletion of the caretaker government. Because when you are opposition or when you are general people, when you are dissatisfied with the government, when you are angry with the government, when you uh, 
you don't see that government is performing when you are seeing that government is doing corruption, government is doing terrorism, government is doing politicization, government is just taking away all the opportunities and all the resources from people just to serve themselves. When you have anger in your heart, when you have dissatisfaction in your heart, you wait for the next election. Okay, next election, I have, I'll have chance at least once in, a, in five years, once in five years to register my anger, register my objection against the misdeeds of ruling party. Now by deleting the caretaker system, this only opportunity which comes once in five years, this is actually going to be snatched. That's why people are angry, people are dissatisfied, people are disillusioned and political party, in particular the opposition party, they are desperate to get back this system in our constitution. Now unless this system is reintroduced in our constitution, I don't think any fair election will be conducted in Bangladesh and I don't think that election conducted under a political party led government will ever be accepted by people. And I don't think such an election would, I mean, create a society in which people would live in peace and harmony. So this will be definitely my last word that for the sake of people, for the sake of country, for the sake of our national aspiration, for the sake of political stability, if we love our country. We have to find an acceptable solution to this political deadlock. And in my view, the most plausible and acceptable political solution is reintroduction of the Kachaka government. Well, you may reform some of the things of the Kachaka government. You may make it more efficient, more acceptable. You may, I mean, uh, clearly spell out the function of the Kachaka government or clear. I mean, categorically specify its tenure. You may bring about some changes, you can do some reforms in the category system, but the bottom line is you must introduce practical government. So that's all I uh, had to speak in front of you, and I wish you all the best. Uh, Allah Hafiz.